Now another sufficient condition is when the function may not be continuous, but it can be broken into finitely many pieces where it is continuous. So this is the definition of a piecewise continuous function. So a function, let us call it f from a closed interval a b to r is called piecewise piecewise continuous if there exists a finite subdivision there exists a subdivision of this interval a b into finitely many sub intervals such that on each such piece on each such, such uh, sub interval on each sub interval the function f is continuous and at each endpoint endpoint of this sub, of all sub intervals so or at each endpoint of each sub interval the left hand limit and the right hand limit exist. Right hand limit exist, but they may not be equal. So, we have already seen an example. So, let me redraw. So, this is our A, this is our B. So, if, if we can divide this interval a b into finitely many pieces, like this. So, each such sub interval is a part of the subdivision. Now, our graph of this function f which is a, now a piecewise continuous function will look like something like this. So, this is so on each piece it is a continuous function and the left hand side and the right hand side limit exist which mean that they are finite limits. So, here the first chunk looks like this but the second chunk may look like this, the third chunk may look like this, the fourth chunk may look like this and so on. Okay. So, this is on each subdivision, it is a continuous function and when you approach at any end point, let us say this one, at any end point if you approach it from the left and you approach it from the right, the limits exist but they may not be equal. Um, in case of a continuous function, they were equal and they were equal also the left and the right hand side limits were also equal to the value of the function at this end point, but here also they may not be equal. So, first of all the left hand and the right side, uh, the right hand limits may not be equal and they may not be equal to the value of the function at this point which may lie, lie here. So, this is if this point is c, this is can be f of c and this is the left limit and this is the right limit and all three are different. Still the left hand and the right hand side limits exist and this is all we want for a piecewise continuous function. So, what is not allowed here 
is if if you want to have say the if I delete this first chunk here. Now let's say it starts here, but at this inter at this end point it goes to plus infinity as an asymptote. Okay, it has an asymptotic value plus infinity at this end point. So this kind of behavior is not allowed. So similarly, you cannot have minus infinity as a vertical asymptote going to minus infinity at this end point or at any end points like this. So this kind of behavior is not allowed. Once we know the definition of piecewise continuous function, we can state a sufficient condition that integral a to b f t d t exists if f is piecewise continuous on this interval a b. Okay, so this is this gives us sufficient conditions for the existence of Riemann integrals on closed and bounded intervals. Now for improper Riemann integrals, we can state a sufficient condition improper Riemann integrals of the form integral a to infinity f t d t. So, we can state this theorem which is a sufficient condition for existence of this integral. So, we can write that integral a to infinity f t d t exists if first condition the function f t is piecewise the function f t is piecewise continuous on the interval a capital R for all R greater than A. Okay. First of all, it has to be piecewise continuous on this closed interval A R for every R greater than A. Secondly, we suppose that F T is greater than or equal to 0 on A infinity on this region A infinity. So, we suppose that the that the integral is positive sorry the function is positive and thirdly we suppose that integral a to r f t d t is bounded above by some constant m for every r for some m for every r greater than a. Okay. So, if these three conditions are met, then, then we say that, then we can rest assured that our improper integral a to infinity f t d t will exist. Okay. So, this is one, one sufficient condition. Another sufficient condition is given as follows. So, assume one and two in the above theorem meaning that first that f t is piecewise continuous on each interval of the form a r closed interval for r greater than a and it is positive on a infinity. Now we suppose that suppose that there exists a function function g t such that f t less than or equal to g t for all t in a infinity 
So, f t is bounded above by this function g t for all t and the improper integral g t d t exists. Then we can say that the improper integral of f t d t also exists. So, this is a kind of comparison theorem where you have two functions and the right hand side function you know that its improper Riemann integral exists. Then the improper Riemann integral of the left hand function is also finite and exists. So, these are two sufficient conditions that I want you to know and they can be used to check whether some integrals are uh, exist as a, an improper Riemann integral or not. So, let me give a couple of examples. So, the first case is f t is e to the power minus t. Now, we already know that this integral the improper Riemann integral from 0 to infinity f t d t exists. We have computed it using the limits. But we can also apply the first theorem as follows. So, <coughs> what we need to prove that is that integral 0 to r e to the minus t dt is bounded above by some m for all r greater than 0. So, this is what we want. So, let us see if this is true. What is this integral? We, we can evaluate it directly and we find that this is 1 minus exponential minus r. So, of course, this is it is e easy to see that this is always less than or equal to 1 for all r greater than or equal to 0. So, therefore, we have found this upper bound m which is equal to 1 in this case and therefore, we can say that this improper Riemann integral exists. Another example is as follows f t equal e to the power minus t squared ok 1 less than equal to t less than infinity. <coughs> so, let us see what is whether this integral 0 to infinity sorry 1 to infinity f t d t exists or not. So, this is equal to limit r tends to infinity 1 to infinity 1 to r e to the power minus t square d t. This is the definition of the improper Riemann integral. Now, note that in the first example e to the power minus t, we can evaluate this integral explicitly and we can uh, answer the question using the first theorem. But here, we do not know how to evaluate it explicitly. So, we will use the second theorem here. So, note that for t greater than or equal to 1, t square is greater than or equal to t, right. Therefore, e to the power t square is greater than or equal to e to the power t and this implies that e to the power minus t is greater than or equal to e to the power minus t square for all t greater than or equal to 1. Now, <coughs> we can apply the second theorem. The second theorem with g t equal e to the power minus t. We know that integral 1 to infinity e to the power minus t d t exists ok. Uh, in the same fashion as we did it for 0 to infinity, we can also evaluate it from 1 to infinity and one can show that this exists and we have shown that this is uh, e to the power minus t square is less than or equal to e to the power minus t and these are both positive. Therefore, by the second theorem, 
integral 1 to infinity e to the power minus t square dt also exists.